Hey, in this video I'm gonna be showing you how I created this leather helmet and for that we're gonna be using ZBrush, Maya, Marmoset and Substance Painter for the textures. This is gonna be the short part where I just talk about some of the parts of the work that I think are important but I recorded the whole process, everything I did is recorded and everything's gonna be uploaded for free on the channel. So if you're interested in seeing the entire workflow and everything that I do, just wait like a week or two and will be uploaded. So let's get into it. So to start off, the most important part of any project is gonna be gathering reference. And I use pure ref to do this. So we're gonna start very simple by blocking out the main shapes in ZBrush. To do this I make masks, then I extract those masks, and then I'll add some thickness to it. And I'll make sure that I'm working with a clean topology so it's easy to manipulate the shape. And for my thickness I'd like to use the dynamic thickness, because this way we get a lot of control and it's very non-destructive. I can always come in and change the thickness. One thing that's also very important for me is to give poly paint to all my block outs so I can see how the colors are looking and it just gives me a better idea of the design and how everything comes together. So I'm always doing the same thing, I'm repeating what I did for the goggles, I'm just creating a mask for a block out piece, then I'm gonna extract that, I'm gonna z remesh it to get some nice topology and then I'll add some dynamic thickness to it and some poly paint of course. So I'll just look at my reference and I see what F piece I want to do. So I'll make a mask, extract and dynamic thickness and poly paint and just put it in place. And again, I'm using dynamic thickness for everything. So I can change it very easily by just adjusting the slider. I can get a different look. And I'm not doing the mask for every single piece. Sometimes easier to just start with a primitive. So for the mask, I'm just taking a sphere. I'm gonna push that into place with the move brush until I get the shape that I like. So you can see I'm just slowly looking for the shape that I like and I'm looking at my reference and trying to read the shapes and trying to translate them into the block out. Sometimes I'll also just grab another sub tool and I'll just duplicate it and move it around to really quickly get something going. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do block out pieces. And I use a combination of a bunch of them. Whichever one's gonna be the fastest is the one that I'm gonna be using. And here you can really see how handy it is to have that dynamic thickness. Just kinda iterating over the thickness and looking for something that I like. And even though ZBrush is for sculpting, if you take a close look at your topology, you can get some very nice hard surface stuff going. So I'm just manipulating the topology and deleting it. And then with the dynamic thickness, we can start to adjust the look of the piece. And you can see how easily we got a pretty complicated shape. While the topology is not perfect, but it serves perfectly as a block out. The only thing I'm worried about at this point is just getting the block out done as fast as I can and as clean as I can. And you'll notice that I'll jump around from the mask to the helmet part to the goggles and jumping around all the time just putting in pieces that I feel like putting in. And this approach might look very different from what you're used to. Usually when people do block outs they'll just take a, a ball and start dynamashing and just pulling shapes. But I like to work with very clean topology because in that case the topology is doing stuff for me. I'm not fighting the topology because it's so clean it's very easy to move around and to work with the dynamic thickness. Opposed to having like a dynamesh blob which is very difficult to actually manipulate. Sometimes it's also worth switching the matcap up just so you can see the reflections a little bit better. So you can see if your topology is clean enough. Also looking at it from different angles to make sure all the angles work. And once I'm pretty happy with what I have, I will come in with a more traditional approach. We'll take some H polish or standard 
I will do some hand sculpting as well. And you don't want to get attached to anything that you did because we're still at the block out phase. I will still move things around all the time. Here you can see I'm just moving a whole bunch of stuff up. Just very quickly going in and because the topology is very clean, I can easily still adjust all the proportions with ease. And I'll pay some close attention to how stuff's interacting with each other, making sure nothing is intersect. And a pretty cool trick is polishing a strap. And then with morph target, we can adjust that polish so we can easily decide on the thickness of straps. And again, this is only possible because we're working with very clean topology. And for more complicated pieces, I leave ZBrush and I jump into Maya, but you can do this in any modeling software, not just hand models or more complicated stuff, which usually is like a little hard surface stuff like buckles and other metal pieces. And I think it's important to always think about your workflow. If you can do something easily in Maya, there's no point in doing it in ZBrush, but it might be more difficult. So I'm just thinking what's going to be the best approach for me, which is going to be easiest and what's going to give me the best result in the fastest time. But I can also take block out piece that I did in ZBrush, for example, a little bit of strap, I add some thickness, then I adjust the segments a little bit to be a little bit more complicated. Then I just bring it back into ZBrush where I start to place it so it's not intersecting badly with the buckle. And then with the dynamic thickness preview, I can see the thickness. So for the tube, I'm just modeling out one single piece. Then I'm gonna duplicate that a bunch of times. So we get like tube. And then I'm gonna merge that all together, bring it into ZBrush. And then in ZBrush with the bend curve modifier, we can easily start adjusting the shape of that. So with some points we can just control the curvature and we can easily move it around. It's like you have it rigged up but in ZBrush. And I really like doing stuff like this in ZBrush as it allows me to do it really fast while focusing on the silhouette. And again it's just a block out so try to keep your pieces simple. Like this complicated metal piece just gonna be a simple cylinder. Then using the bend curve technique, I can do the rope there. Once I'm pretty happy with all the elements that we have blocked in, I can do some sculpting work on our block out. So I'm just going in with the damn standard and starting to design the, the line work of the helmet. And I'm just going to do this very rough and ugly because I don't really care if it's clean or not. Because the only thing I care about is the design and then later we clean the design up. You can see I also brought in some move brush and some standard to break up the shape a little bit to start making it look more organic. So again, with the standard brush I can just do some sculpting. I'm just gonna block out some folds. So the ear cap is a pretty complicated piece to sculpt it out. So I'm just gonna go into Maya and model it out. Then once I'm happy with what I have, I'm gonna go into ZBrush and I'm gonna actually place it. I'm placing it in ZBrush to see it to come together with everything. And then you can see I'm still adjusting that piece and slowly adding more and more details. And I'm just exporting and importing between Maya and ZBrush all the time. Then once we have that piece in, we can see how the strap is going to interact with the ear cup. And we can come back to Maya to model out some more detail. Because it's going to be simpler in Maya and ZBrush for me. Then I'm just going to place the newly created ear cup with more details over the old one so I know where it is. So here you can see I'm just taking that simple block out piece. And again I'm bringing it into Maya. I'm going to alter the topology. I'm going to make it more complicated. Add a bunch of details to it. Because I'm happy with the shape already. And at that point I can start to take it further. And when I'm modeling this, I'm trying to keep the low poly in mind already because I want to try to reuse as much as I do. So when we have the high finished, 
maybe we can take what we have here and use it as a base for the low poly which is gonna save us some time. So now that's more detailed, I just bring it back in ZBrush and that's it. So for a complicated geometry piece like this, I'm just gonna start off with a single piece, make sure it's tileable. I'm just gonna tile it a bunch until we have a nice looking pattern and bring it into ZBrush. Then we can just place it where it needs to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and mask everything that's outside of the, the metal. Then we just delete that and then we have a nice piece. So again, I'm just jumping around from mask, helmet to goggles. I'm just trying to work on everything a little bit at a time. And by doing it this way, everything's gonna come together instead of having one piece be very polished and then not working well with the other pieces. And for pieces like this, you can see the topology is very clean. So I'm gonna be very strict about that because I wanna reuse this for the low poly. And I'm just repeating the same process over and over again. Zebra mesh, extract and adding dynamic thickness. So one thing you might notice, everything looks a little bit wobbly and not too clean because this is the zebra mesh mask that we did. So we can take this into Maya we can just start editing this topology to be very clean and nice looking. And I'm doing this in Maya with the Edit Edge Flow, it's just a very useful tool to be using. Then we can bring that cleaned up piece into ZBrush. And then we took our block out to a more polished look. And at this point I'm also going to be adding thickness and support edges in Maya. So we can really start modeling out something nice and clean. And I can just quickly select the edges and start brushing them together to create the glasses of the goggles themselves. And you can see I'm always jumping between Maya and ZBrush, doing some hot surface work in Maya, and then bring those pieces into ZBrush and placing them so they interact well with the other elements. So here I'm just going to prepare my mesh to DynaMesh, so I'm making sure everything's nice and tight, there's no gaps, so DynaMesh as well. And after DynaMeshing I will z remesh and then reproject back. And the reason why I'm DynaMeshing everything together is because I want to have a very nice topology to work with, so we can easily do some damage. And I suck at modeling, so I will always model everything in a very simple way. Here you can see we have a pretty complicated metal piece, but we just start with a plane, then we make a triangle, we make a hole in the triangle, we're gonna add some thickness, then we're gonna add some nice baffles, and then we're just gonna duplicate that one triangle, and then we're gonna add some pieces in the middle to make them all intersect well together. And this is going to be very difficult to all merge together in Maya. So at that point I'll bring it into ZBrush once everything's into place. Then just DynaMesh everything together, do the Z remeshing and projecting. And then everything is just nice and merged. Another technique I use quite often is to have a curve and then from that curve we can generate some topology around it this way we can create some complicated tube shaped models just like the goggles, I can take the block out topology that we did in ZBrush with the Z-Remesh and I can take that in Maya and start to refine that topology. So it's gonna be more complicated and it's gonna support some more complicated shapes. So I'm just modeling some quick holes where the metal piece is gonna go through. 
and it might be difficult to get it exactly in the right spot so then in zbrush i'm just gonna take the move brush and move all the topology just a little bit so everything interacts nicely so i use this technique all the time here you can see i used for the straps we get the base topology from a zbrush extraction and then the maya we can clean it up and after the cleanup we can do some dynamic thickness to see how everything looks and we can use the same technique to get the block out that we did the masking the abstraction to take the pieces out of the block out so we can just mask out pieces from the block out and we can mask that extract it z remesh it so we have a nice topology to work with and then we can modify that nice topology in maya like we did with the goggles and with the mask so first I'm just extracting all the pieces and putting them all together. Now you can see everything starts to look very clean. And once I'm happy with everything more or less, I go to Maya and here you can see we start to modify the topology. So it's going to be a little bit more complicated, but it's going to interact with the other elements nicely as you can see. And we can also project our block out shapes back a little bit and fix up the projection. And I always make sure that in ZBrush I put some edge loops on the topology. So we get some loops around the border of the topology. And then we can just cut some out and we can create like a layered effect. So now we're going to be working with a thin layer of leather on top. Which is going to be laying on another piece of leather. So I'm just trying to, to hold on to a real life construction where we have a fine leather layer. Which is laying on top of a rougher material. And the rougher material layer that's underneath the fine leather is going to have way less polish, of course. So ZBrush is a little bit faster to work with. And you can see how everything comes together quite nicely. And we can do the poly paint again. So we can clearly see the layering. And then I'll do one final interior layer all the way down. So in total we have three layers. I'm also going to go ahead and model a stitch brush. So we just model a very simple stitch in Maya and then we create a brush from it. And then I'm going to be drawing that brush out on quad planes that we generate in Maya from curves. And we can get those curves by selecting the edge that we did for the layer stuff. It sounds a little bit complicated trying to explain it very fast. But in the full course you'll see that it's very simple and very effective. So at this point I'm just working in some stitches and some detail lines. And of course we cannot keep working on the helmet, we have to keep jumping around from the goggles, we can put some stitches in there as well. And because we z remeshed this very very bad topology to work with that we got from Maya, we can easily punch in some holes. At this point I'm also going to do some actual sculpting, so for example with standard brush gonna be doing some folds and I always like to compare my work that I did so I'll jump between the sculpted one to the unsculpted one and kind of see which one's working better and yeah you can see I'm just repeating the, the same workflow over and over I'm going back to Maya to make the piece a little bit more complicated by inflating the edges to get a little bit more of an interesting look to the strap And I'm always paying close attention to how elements interact with each other. So I'm just looking at the reference and see the little bit on top, so I put them on top. And at this point we're still on block out, but we're adding some details. So I can work a little bit on maybe some glue that let down. This is just going to make the piece look very detailed, little imperfections like this. And again, my topology is simple, it's still just uh, dynamic thickness. So we bring it into Maya and we add some inflation to the edges to get a nice effect. And I really like to bring layering to everything. So just like the helmet, I'm gonna bring some layering to the mask as well. And model out some of the block out pieces. I'm trying to keep my topology as clean as I can. So we might be able to reuse it for the low poly. And 
and the further along we get into the sculpt the further along we get into detailing and the more complicated the details are gonna be but it's all very simple for the straps I can add an alpha to have some surface noise to make them look very detailed so you can get an idea of how they'll look like with the texture applied in the end I do use a little bit of booleans but when I do I do it in ZBrush and then after boolean I'll bring the boolean piece back to Maya and I'll clean up the topology a little bit as I get more fine control over the vertices and edges in Maya post to ZBrush You can also see me switching the colors all the time. One point I'm working with a brown color, then with a gray color. This is just to get a little bit of a different view of the model. Here you can see I'm placing a buckle and I already made the low poly while also doing the high poly. So I can move them together. Because when I have multiple buckles, I only need to retopologize it once. I'll also do a lot of detail work on layers so I can quickly switch the intensity around. So I always try to look for the simplest way of modeling stuff. So for example, we have this very complicated looking strap. So all I'm doing is I'm just taking a curve and I'm generating a tube around it. And then I just model a little piece and I duplicate the little piece like two times and place them on top. We get something looking very complicated, but simple. And once we're very far in the block out, we can do some detail work like this. We can take the damn standard put a little line there and then using brushes like um, smooth direction we can clean that up I also like to keep all my meshes water tight so I can just retopologize them more easily and it's gonna help with the bake and eventually if you do use uh, a brush to put in the stitches as a model we do have to indent them and the reason why I'm putting them as a model is because I want to bake down the ID map to use some substance paint. Very often I also go into isolation. I focus on one part of the model at a time, for example, the goggles without seeing anything else. So I can just really focus on that one part of the model. And all the way at the end, we're also going to do some more fine detail sculpting where you focus a little bit on the surface look of the ladder using some alphas to get some detail I'll touch every piece a little bit with some simple brushes and ZBrush to just give some surface detail so here I'm just using the damn standard I think just to break up the surface a little bit I'm also gonna go in very depth on how to clean up the final high and to prepare it for retopology and how to bake the ID map to use the substance painter so we can make selections for materials in painter and to do the ID map we're just doing some poly paint and everything that you want to be selectable you just fill with a poly paint so for example, every ladder piece I'll make orange to be able to select them. Also, I'm gonna set up some simple scripts in Maya to export very quickly to a mama set with one button click. This is gonna make the workflow between Maya and mama set super easy. So we can quickly block out some topology, give it some quick UVs, click one button to get it in mama set and then do a quick test bake to see how everything's looking with the bake applied. In the full course, I'm gonna go very, very, very in depth on creating the low poly. It's gonna be like almost half of the entire course just covering the, the low poly. But in the short video, I'm not gonna spend too much time showing you as I do think it's one of the more boring parts of the process. But just know if you're gonna follow the full course, 
you can learn a lot about creating low polys. Also going to talk a little bit about UVs and the importance of having straight UVs so we can apply some nice details in painting. And going to talk a little bit about why it's important to triangulate your models where it's necessary and when it's necessary. And then we're going to do our final bakes in Marmoset opposed to Painter as Marmoset is really nice to bake in. And then we'll end up with a final low poly that's pretty high because it's going to be focused on making a nice render. And then once we have all our final bakes, we're going to go to Painter and then we're going to set up a project. So here's some settings I usually change in Painter just to get the paint file looking nice. So we have a good field of view and a nice white background and nice camera effects and all that stuff. So I will start with the big ladder piece, so I'll import some detail maps that I'm going to use, just some simple ladder alphas. Then we start with a fill layer, then we're just going to fill that with some base values like the, the color, the roughness, the metallic and so on. And then on top of that we're going to put a hue saturation layer and a mask so we can make some parts darken and lighter. And then all the way on top of the layer stack, we're gonna fill a fill layer with a curvature map and put it to overlay at 25% more or less. It's gonna give some very nice depth to your textures. because we're getting some of that high poly information back. And on top of the, the variation layer, I always like to put some adjustment layers to quickly tweak the look of everything. So there's the color crack node here we can just up the contrast saturation of certain values. And then my favorite part is going to be the detail part where we put some alpha map on the mask and then we're going to put some height information and uh, some roughness information which is very important because that's going to break up the material nicely. And then we can always go back to our base value and adjust the base roughness. And because everything's on adjustment layers, everything's gonna update, like the detail layers as well. And because we did the ID map for the stitches, we can very easily add some color or height to the stitches in Painter. And just like ZBrush in Painter, I'm working with layers. So I'm first building up the main ladder layer, and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna work a little bit on the underlaying ladder layer. And then with a mask we can show some of that underlaying ladder layer to have some surface damage on the ladder. So I'm just tweaking some values and trying to make it nice and subtle. And once I'm pretty happy with how the ladder is looking I'm gonna go ahead and jump to some other parts. Just like in ZBrush in the block out you want to work on all the parts together a little bit. Pretty cool trick that I use all the time to manipulate the mask. You can do a blur and then the levels on top and another blur. This way you can control how far your mask is going. So you can expand it a little bit or make it a little bit smaller than what you had. And one thing I'm always doing in Painter, I'm taking the materials I already made and I'm adjusting the values. So for the mask, we're just going to use the same leather material as we did for the helmet. But we're going to go into the base values and adjust the colors a little bit. Then we're also going to go into the detail mask. We're just going to put a new alpha in there to change the look of the material very fast. And by doing this and not starting from scratch every time, we can start the texture very, very fast. And again, I'm working with multiple layers, so I'm working on the underneath surface to show some damage. 
and even for a completely looking different material for example for the straps i just copy the layer stack and then i adjust the base values and the detail mask the texturing is pretty simple and boring if you think about it it's just you take one material and you have the underlaying material so here the underlaying material is metal and above that is some paint so you do some damage to show the underlaying material pop through and once we get to a point where i'm pretty happy with the textures i'm gonna bring everything a mama set start to see a little bit how the final render is gonna look so i'm gonna prepare all my materials and my lighting there and one of my favorite things to do in substance paint is to add blood and other stuff like dust and sand whatever so on top of your materials you can just create like a map called environmental where you can do some cool stuff like blood mud or whatever to blend the materials in nicely together but you do want to keep it subtle of course one of my favorite parts of doing the renders is adding little nice looking effects so for example for the ladder i like to to make that look very fussy so here for example you can see how it looks with and without a first layer i'm going to show you exactly how i do it in the, the full course and I'm gonna add some little first cards to really push the, the fussiness of the ladder it might seem like a very very small detail to add which it is but it's gonna give you a render that extra little bit of polish to make it stand out then I'm also gonna do some work on the glass and you'll notice that I'll do all that stuff in mama set opposed to painter and then just like the ladder, we're gonna add some fussiness to the straps to make them feel more alive. And once I get uh, a good looking render mama set going, I'll bring it into DaVinci Resolve, which is a video editing software where I will do some touch up on the colors to get a little bit of a different look on the renders. So you can really adjust the colors, you can even take like the blues and change the colors and whatever, add more light, uh, more contrast or whatever, just to make the renders look better. And then finally I'll take what I did in DaVinci and put it into Photoshop to do some final touch up and to, to do the final render. And that's my entire workflow for creating character art pieces, like I said the full course is going to be very very long it's going to be the entire process recorded and i'm speaking about everything that i do i explain everything so it's going to be very long but hopefully full of new information that you can learn from i do also have a patreon account so you can support me and support the courses that i make because these do take a lot of time and if you do sign up on patreon there's going to be a lot of exclusive content where you can learn from there's also some project files on there and I'll probably also upload some project files from this project on there. So the full course is going to be out in like a week or two weeks. Like I said, I need to edit it all together. So if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and see you then.